Hello everyone and welcome to another iPhone interview. Today we are joined by the one and only Most Wanted. How are you, man? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I've been doing good. I'm happy to uh, interview you here. It's very cool to have you here. You've been a long uh, member of our Twitter community and you're finally having your first fight. How does it feel to fight it, to be fighting on Misfits? Um, it's definitely not how I thought it'd go. I thought my first fight would be on a different promotion, but the fact that it's happened on Misfits, it literally is so crazy. I did it in less than a year. I was just manifesting it every day, saying I'm going to be on Misfits one day. I'm going to be on Misfits one day. And it just happened out of nowhere. I got that call from Mams and here we are today, man. But it's been a long time coming. I feel, I feel similar about me being on, on IFN as well. So thank you for having me on, man. No problem, man. I love hearing that from you. So talking about the call from Mams, was it um, out of nowhere? And can you talk to us on when it happened and how it happened? Yeah, so it kind of did happen out of nowhere. I was in a phone call, in a Discord call, organizing a fight on one of the smaller promotions against a different guy. Mm -hmm. And he was just being really difficult in promotions. And then I said, oh, I'm getting an important call. Um, yeah. So I'm going to join back in a couple of minutes. And it was from MAMS. I just said an important call on the thing, though. They were like, oh, if he leaves, he's not taking the negotiation seriously. Oh, 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 crying and all this whinging and that. So it's like, I'm like, it's whatever. I'll take the call. I took the call. Yeah. And Mams, and obviously saying, yeah, 135, get to Misfits, you know, going to Leeds, Joey Knight, all of these things. And I'm thinking, rah, like, what? And I joined back the call after the thing. The guy had left. I'm just laughing to myself. Because I didn't tell anyone at that point, but I was just laughing to myself. This guy fucking, you, you telling me about negotiations, bro. I'm on Misfits now. What colour is your Misfits contract? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. Nice. And um, on the topic of that, talking about the Misfits uh, contract and everything, has it been going so far as you imagine it, it would have been? Um, yeah, I suppose so. I suppose so. I, I guess so, because it's kind of like one of those situations where um, I would have thought of a lot of things that I didn't know about yet. It was just a lot of stuff I don't know about. So like getting on there, now I'm speaking to people from Design, organizing, sending them footage so they can post, getting my stuff edited together, making promo posts, making sure I'm tagging Design and Misfits, the Misfits Design. Um, account and then the color color salon the salon bros account and then the mams account you have to do that every post like there's just a lot of things that um that i guess i didn't know but i like it you know i love the process i love promoting mm -hmm. i realized that leading up to this fight um taught me i love the promotion and content side of the scene a lot more and after this fight i'm gonna be really really driving home the content um mm -hmm. even though i didn't get a chance to do that fully fully in the lead up to this fight because i only had like like two and a half, three weeks notice or something like that. And yeah. then that last week is five, five weeks. So it's basically two weeks notice. Mm -hmm. um, so I haven't had a lot of time to prepare a promo. I don't really know much about my opponent promo wise either. But if, if anyone that thinks that this is decent promo, in my opinion, it's just average. This is what everyone that's fighting on Misfits should be able to do. Yeah. Next fight, you're going to see a really big difference if I get more notice. Yeah. And on topic of that, um, are you the uh, person with the least amount of notice that is fighting? And do you know anything about that? On this card, I think I might be the one of the least amount of notice. I haven't spoken to every other person on the card, but I'm definitely one of the, the least noticed person on the card, yeah. Okay, yeah. And how long has Joey Knight been preparing? Um, did you, do you know anything about that? Yeah, I know. He's been he's been looking for an opponent um, on Misfits since... I know he's been training since October. He's been in camp since October, which is a really, really, really long time, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and I know there's three... He had... Uh, he was trying to get with different three different opponents so i know three different opponents or misfits have turned him down i'm not going to say no names but if you're smart you can work it out but obviously mams he was looking for an opponent and he had to make a big boss call calling me mm -hmm. um which i'm really really grateful for you know i'm really grateful for the opportunity so obviously i'll never never ever stop saying thank you to that guy because he didn't have to do this but i'm here man and i appreciate it yeah and talking about your opponent join uh night he's not an easy task your first uh, bout, your uh, debut is immediately against a person who is dangerous. Can you talk us through uh, what type of boxer he is? Um, yeah, he's he's a way very much more experienced than me. I know he's been boxing for fifteen years. You know, two weight regional champion, um, mm -hmm. and he's eight and zero oh in unlicensed boxing as well. He's essentially like an average, like low level pro, to yeah. be honest. In caliber so I, I sort of see myself you know on the ksi fought pro boxer jake paul fought pro boxer most winning fought a pro boxer i want yeah. people i want that post to be made i'm waiting for ifn to be that post that i'm the i'm the one of the the third influencer to fight 
fight a pro boxer, but I'm waiting. <laughs> but um, but no, nah, I, I don't know much about him. Obviously, there's a couple of his fights on YouTube. I know he's a bit of a, a flashy boxer. He's a, he's a bit of a, he poses a lot. He looks really, really clean when he boxes, looks really good. Um, but I, I don't think he's ready for the fight that I'm going to bring to him. I'm not going to let him do any of that clean shit. This is not going to look clean. This is going to look dirty. I'm going to drag him to the trenches. I'm going to drown him, not in no water, but I'm going to drown him in some mud. You get me? Going to yeah. make it dirty in there for him. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And talk <laughs> talking about your strategy um and your whole training camp. I wanted to talk I want I had a question about that. How has training been going? Because I heard you were uh, kind of mentored by Gary Olive. You got some help from Coach Solomon. How has that been going? Um yeah, I've been getting a lot of help from different people. It's been going really well. Um obviously I'm gonna have Gary Olive in my corner. So yeah. that's really good. I'm gonna have him in a corner. I'm going to have the Twitter space going in the corner as well. Um, so I'm going to have a lot of advice from not just Gary, but the whole community as well. is going to be in my space shouting at me while I'm in my corner between rounds. So yeah. <laughs> it should be good. Yeah, of course, man. And um, talking about the fight, how would you see the fight going against a um, professional boxer who is very clean? How do you see the fight going your way? Um, I reckon, without giving up my game plan too much, I reckon that he... He will be flustered by the things I bring to him. Obviously, I'm very unorthodox as I'm a lot newer to boxing as him. I think I'm going to give him looks that he hasn't had in a long, long time. Mm. Um, just very unorthodox. That's that's literally what I'm saying. Okay, of course. And um, talking, uh, talking about your future on Misfits, you seem to be very down to do a Misfits MMA. Can you talk us yes. about your uh, MMA background? Yeah, I've, I've been doing grappling for like a good amount of time now, like probably like three years, but I stopped like a year ago mm -hmm. to focus on boxing more. Yeah. Um, so I have like a three years of experience in grappling mm -hmm. and some and some uh, other experience as well. So it should be really, 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 really good to see me in MMA. I think I'll be a really entertaining fighter for the fans in MMA as well. Um, I've got clips posted on my Twitter of me like slamming people down and stuff like that. So just trust me, if, if I... If, if I get the chance to do this Misfits MMA thing, the fans will be very happy with the performance and the trash talk depending on the opponent. Trust me. Yeah. I heard a certain yeah. egghead evil hero you was like talking about he wanted to fight me in MMA. I'm definitely interested. Trust yeah. me. I'm very, very interested. Yeah. And have you spoken to evil hero about it? Yeah, he was interested. Yeah. Um, obviously, I, 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 um, I kept it very respectful, but he is bored, so it's not really a diss. Just pointing out facts, really. It's quite shiny. Um, so hopefully I can fight him on Misfits and MMA. I'd love that, please, ma'am. Please, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the answer, bro. Um, also had a question about your future on Misfits, um, boxing wise. Who do you who do you see in your um weight category? In your um, yeah, in your weight category, who would you like to face next? Um, well, this fight's at 140, which is pretty close to 135. I'm not really trying to stay down there that much, yeah. to be honest. Um, there's a lot of options, obviously, depending on where I go from here. I really would like, like I said, um, Evil Hero in MMA, if that's possible, or even in boxing, to be fair. Um, yeah. if you can do that at 140 as well. But the fight I really, 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 really want is Halal Ham, because I have a huge personal problem with him. He has a huge personal problem with me. Last time I spoke to Halal Ham on the phone, this guy told me, send me your location, all this and that. And guess what? He didn't come. But that's his business. You need to go go ask him about that, I suppose. But I fucking can't stand a little prick. He's a fat prick. I don't know how you're, you have kids, you have a wife, and you're still fat. Just go work, bro. You're a fucking YouTuber. Go fucking do sit-ups. Go on a jog. Eat lettuce. Yeah, shout out lettuce, but eat some fucking lettuce <laughs> and maybe, maybe you'll be in shape. But other than that, stop doing that fat shit talking about you want to fight me, bro. Because it will go just like our spa did. And you know what I'm talking about. Okay, and talking about sparring. So you, so you just confirmed you sparred with Halal Ham. Yeah. Uh, I guess you don't want to get into that. Well, you can ask him about that. I don't need to. I'm not one of the kind of boxers that talks about sparring. But okay. I mean, I know he is. I know he is. Okay. Right. I know he is, but. But but you can ask him. I'm not going to divulge to his level and start to talk about what happened in sparring. But you can go and ask him what happened in that spar. Uh, I'll be very interested to see the answer. Make sure you tag me in that. I right, sure. And um, about other spars, we have heard of uh, behind the grave lines that you sparred with other big influencers. Can you name us which influencers you have sparred before? No need to get in details. Just want to hear some names. Yeah, I've sparred. I've moved around with um, a lot of the sparring I've done with people have been like just quick. More so, you, I don't even know if you could call it sparring because it wasn't even really work. It was just like sort of giving each other looks. Um, I've, I've trained in the gyms with Dean. Um, 
chase as well but that was more so a real play i can't lie <laughs> just imagine the size difference it was crazy but yeah dean chase um uh so happy fox uh, I think that's it. I think I miss unless I'm missing someone. Which in, in which case, oh yeah, AJ Bunker, obviously. Sorry, I'm bugging. I'm thinking of the men. That's why. Um, and I think I think that's it as well. We also spoke with AJ Bunker. Yeah, yeah. And how was she in the ring? She's good, bro. She comes forward. Everything, bro. She she come forward. Eat the shots. Come through. She's she's she likes to get stuck in. So I know she's very game. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing her fight. But, oh, I really can't. I can't call it, man. I I hope. Yeah. I reckon it'll be a really good fight. I reckon that's a contender for fight of the night. I think that's a sleeper fight, to be fair. I think people are sleeping on it. Yeah. And when looking back at their previous fights, what would you say that AJ Bunker would have to do to win this time? I reckon she just needs to, to just to land the more effective shots. I know that sounds like the most obvious thing to say, how you win a fight, land more effective shots. But mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing that I would say for both sides. They just, either side just needs to land more effective shots and then they'll get the job done for it, to be fair. Yeah, of course. And talking about the Misfits 012 card, what would you say is the fight of the night? Um, I would say the fight of the night is between Fox and Small Spot and Jay, mm -hmm. or OJ Rose and Ashley Raksu. But then, then again, that you have that sleeper fight in in a in AJ Bunker and Elbrook as well. Yeah. So it could be one of those three. Yeah, and talking about Misfits O Twelve, of course they always hand out um knockout bonuses, fight, fighter of the night bonuses. Will you be going? Will you be trying to get to the KO bonus this time? I, anyone who knows anything about me, they know I'm poor, okay? And beggars can't be choosers, and everyone knows I'm a beggar, okay? So when I get my knockout, I'm going to be going up to Ask Taylor, and I'm going to be begging for that bonus. Yes, yes, I will. Yes, I will be, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about uh, the KO bonus um, and your financial situation, where where would you invest it in, and what would you do with the money? Content, straight away. I'll, be, I'll fix up my living situation. I'll make sure I eat food every day. Hopefully. Um, and then I'll invest a lot of it into content. I really want to get a PC. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people might think that Misfits is my end goal, like for everything. Misfits is a goal and I'm very happy I got here. But my end end goal and what kind of thing I want to do in content space anyways is basically being a streamer, a live streamer um, mm -hmm. and just doing my kind of content. And just building that, that that sort of community. I love I love the way that streamers are inter able to interact with their community and the relationship they have with their fans. I sort of like it. That's why I like Spaces so much, because it's sort of the closest I can get without having the whole setup and that. So, yeah. yeah. And who do you look up to in the streamer scene? Um, my favorite streamer, uh, to get ready, everyone call me a meat rider in the comments, but uh, your age, YRG for sure. Okay. All right. Yeah. And talking about streaming and everything with content creation related, you are really into content creation. Do you have any tips um, or feedback to all the influencers fighting on this card who aren't doing enough in promotion? Um, I would say literally just get in touch with the community. A lot of the things I'm posting, you know, the community are helping me. I know IFN's offering help with people, help for people. Um, there's a fan offering help for people. I'm sure there's other people that make posters and graphics that will help you. And even the people that do charge. They're only charging like 20, 30 pounds. Like I, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that make really good trailers out there that are doing it either free or even um for like the lowest lowest like 20, 30 pounds or 30 dollars or something like that. So literally just get in touch, get in tapped with the tapped in with the community and then give them credit under the post. Because there's a lot of people I see that get free help and then they don't tag for fucking credit under the post. So make sure you give them fucking credit under the post. Come on now. W, W most. And um talking about uh, a day in the life of most wanted, can you talk us through what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Okay, so I wake up. Yes. Um, first thing I do is I check my phone. Hundred percent. I'll be honest. Um, I go through, see what I've been tagged in, see what I'm notified in on Instagram and um, and Twitter as well. Mm -hmm. And then I usually just by them I spend half an hour in bed just doing that. Then I'll get uh get washed up, you know, shower and all of that for the day, brush my teeth, everything. Um, and then more time. I get right back on that bed and I start watching videos. I start watching fucking TV, this, that, and a third. Sometimes I do film study, boxing study. You know, there's a really good uh, YouTube channel called Skiller Boxing that I sometimes watch um, and stuff like that. So, yeah. That's and it. then after that, I usually try, I, I run at night. That's literally it. Unless I go to the gym that day, it depends on what day. I talk about how I went today for me, innit? And then I run at night. I run from like 9 30, 10, 10 o'clock ish onwards because it's nice and dark. The streets are quiet. I can just focus, listen to my music and that. But yeah. Lovely to hear that. So most I actually had a question about the Twitter community. As you are very invested in it, can you name some honorable people in the scene who who you would like to credit? 
yeah, for sure. I mean, there's like plenty. Obviously, you got like Prob, um, you have uh Gazi, Drazinos, mm-hmm. um, you have um a lot of people like that's like the main people that tweet a lot about the community. You have Wayne as well. He tweets quite a lot. Um, Lesra, GVZ. Mm-hmm. You have quite a few people that tweet a lot in the scene. Yeah. And uh, talking about uh, the Twitter scene, you already had, you also had some controversies in the past um, with the fan. Um, everyone, everyone knows it's uh, all good now, but can you talk us through um, how, how the situation is kind of for you? How it feels for you to be with him? Yeah, it's calm. Like, you know, it's sort of like it's 2024. It's a new it's a new start. Like, you know, I yeah. think me and him both sort of just want to wipe the slate clean yeah. and just move forward. You know, I'm on my path. He's on his path. You know, we can we can still talk about whatever boxing and I can chill in his space. He can chill in my space. Just talk about this, that and a third. But, yeah. you know, we don't really need to. It doesn't it doesn't need to be like a thing. Like, you know, at the end of the day, there was definitely a point in time where he hated me and I definitely hated him as well. Mm-hmm. But I think we're both we're both past that. I mean, we're both young. I'm only 20. I'm not sure exactly how old he is, but I'm only 20. I have a lot of growing up to do, a lot mm-hmm. of maturing to do. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And there was also some talks like um, a long time ago in the past between you and him having a, a show together. Would you still be open to do that for Misfits? Um. I don't know, man. The ball's in their court, really. The ball's in in misfits and the fans' court. I'm I'm pretty much up for anything, you know. Of course, yeah. And talking about misfits, do you believe that misfits is doing enough in the promotion uh, upcoming to the fight uh, lately? Um. Yeah, I, I have noticed they've been retweeting a lot of other people's stuff more than mine. They retweeted some like three of other guys' posts, and they only did one of mine. So you know, Chris, come on, my my guy, you know. Chris, yeah, please, thank you. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Other than that, nah, it's pretty good. You know, I know they're they're doing a lot of content around with the fighters. They're getting posting fighters' uh, bag work and pad work, so they're definitely doing good, man. Misfits is always doing their job. Yeah, and who would you rank in the top three of best promoters upcoming to the fight? Who would you rank in top three promoters? Do you want me to be real? Yeah, be real. Okay, cool. Even though HS Tiki Talk he was vulgar, he made the most noise. He, he went very viral with it. I would put him on top one. And top two and three is going to be hard because we have the Twitter community working hard. Like you, Fez, um, Ashley, like they've been, uh, OJ, they've been going all back and forth. Everything has been happening there. Ellen, Ash, Ellen um, AJ have been doing good, both of them. Yeah, Ellen, AJ, yeah, they've also been doing good. But it, it just hasn't gone viral like that yet. Like unbear level viral. Like it, it went fucking to mainstream media, you know? But who do you reckon is the top three? Um, I don't know if I can do the top three thing, but I think that I think that I'm promoting like top three. I think I'm in the top three for promotion on Discord, Discord specifically on O12. I think I'm in the top three somewhere. Yeah. But I, I don't know about everyone else. I, I'm not really. I don't know. I probably haven't seen everyone's stuff, so I don't want to give a biased opinion. Okay. Um. But OJ's not been promoting, so he needs to, he needs to start doing that. Are we going to hear anything about you and OJ in the press conference? No, I don't no. have any personal problem with OJ. You know, we, we did before, but I squashed it with him. He squashed it with me. It's calm now. There's nothing, there's nothing like bad going on there. But I'm just, I'm just saying I haven't really been seeing him promote like as much as other people in the card. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And- Okay, so also had also had another question, but I think we can best avoid that. It was who who do you think is the person that promotes the least? Are you still down? Yeah. It probably is. I mean, who else is even on the card? Like, not Logan Paul's not done shit. Tristan Ham's not done shit. Um, who else is there? Fox and Jay have been doing good. Um, I think that's it. Everyone's been doing pretty good. Ben Williams hasn't been doing shit. Evil. I think I would say probably Ben Williams is worse than OJ. You reckon? Mm. Mm. Yeah. And uh, talking about uh, your upcoming fight and uh, Mrs. O12 card, what's your favorite um, fight of the night? Um, The one I'm most looking forward to is probably going to be OJ and Ashley because I know Ashley's going to walk through him. Okay. And is there also some bias uh, there or is it just pure... uh, just lo- looking at each other and basing it off that. No, I'm a fan of Ash Ashley Raksu, but um, 
I also can remove that bias and just look at it from a boxing perspective. In my own opinion, I genuinely think that Ash is going to have a pretty easy night. Yeah, and how would you see that fight go? I think it's going to be either a decision like by domination or like a third or fourth round finish TKO by Ash. Okay, so you're very confident in Ashley winning. Yeah, I think I think there there will I think you win every single moment of the fight, however it goes. Yes. And talking about confidence, your fight is coming up. Uh, again, Joey Knight, very huge guy, a lot of experience. How have you been keeping your confidence up and your mentality straight to get into this fight properly? Um, I'm comfortable with all outcomes. I said this on another, another show, but I'm very comfortable with all outcomes, win, lose or draw. I'm accepted that all very, very possible. And I'm comfortable with any of those outcomes. I think that's going to give me the composure, help me relax on fight night because I don't really care. Regardless of nothing, no one's going to get hurt. He don't hit that hard to hurt me, okay? And and uh, yeah, there's nothing he can do that's gonna that's gonna take me by shock. Definitely not. Um, you know, I've I've been I've been in there with killers in the gyms that I've been in the, the, the and stuff. So yeah. trust me, I was look. I, listen, listen. I sparred Fox G. I'm prepared. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> you get me? Yeah, of course, man. And um, yeah, th those were all my last questions. Do you have any last message for Joey Knight? Um, no, not really. I mean, look, I posted it on my Twitter today. Don't know when this is going out, but I, I already gave my thoughts. Um, yeah. I reckon, I reckon he he he's gonna do a good job. He's gonna look clean, but I, I don't think I don't think he's gonna be ready for what I bring. I think that out of the two of us, I think he's gonna be the one shocked and surprised, and I think I'm gonna be surprised in the audience. You know, I'm coming in, I'm the underdog. I'm this is my debut. I'm fighting someone who's eight and zero. Everyone's gonna expect me to lose, but guess what? They don't know what I know. Okay, only I do, and I can't wait to show that on January twentieth. And with that said, uh, down into the, the zone. Watch the fight. Uh, we're going to put Moses' link in the description. And we'll see you guys at the next interview. See you.